After the underperformance of some of Walt Disney's feature length films like Sleeping Beauty and Alice in Wonderland, they had a bit of a dilemma. They had to keep making money, but animation was way too expensive, so they had to come up with something new. Disney was looking for a way to cut costs, because if they didn't, they may have to shut down the entire animation studio and just end it there. And their next film, 101 Dalmatians, that they wanted to release sure couldn't happen because they ha would have had to have animated every single one of those Dalmatians and it would have just cost crazy amounts doing it the traditional way. But then the inventor and animator who works alongside Walt Disney called Up Iwerks found a way to get around that in a process called Xenography. So before we get into xenography, let's talk about how the traditional animation process traditionally worked. So um, I have got a separate video on it here, but just for a quick kind of synopsis of how it works. Basically, the animators all drew their animations on paper. Those drawings were then passed on to ink and paint artists who took the drawings, put cell or celluloid on top of them and basically inked over all of the outlines. And then they flipped that cell sheet over and painted on the back of it and that gave you a character. And then they did this for a whole lot of characters, they stacked them on top of each other and took a picture of them on top of a background and that made up one frame and each second of a traditionally animated film typically had around 12 frames so you can imagine how long that took. So when Up Iwerks came up with Xenography, which was adopted from Xerox's photocopying technology that they developed just before World War II, it basically got rid of the entire ink process. So instead of them having to ink stuff onto cell, they could basically just photocopy stuff over onto the cell directly from the artist's drawings. So obviously while this is just one part of the process, it did still save a whole load of time. Because they did still have to go in and then paint all those cell sheets. But there were a few other benefits that came along with using xenography, such as the fact that they could photocopy a single drawing multiple times on a cell sheet, meaning that there could be a whole load of puppies just from one drawing. The machine also allowed them to make different sizes from a single drawing too, so there could be like a really big puppy and a really tiny one from the same drawing, no matter what the original drawing size was. All of this leading to even more saved time. But as you can probably tell from the title of this video, and as you probably just know anyway, not everything was good from the xenography process. Firstly, it led to characters having much thicker lines, and it also meant that the lines had to be black because the xenography machine couldn't do any other colour other than black, at least when they were first starting off. Although by the time the rescuers came, they could do medium grey lines, which kind of helped the lines to look a bit softer. But it still didn't look the same as how original um, animations looked before they started using xenography. And because of those downsides, Walt, as well as many other people, even up until the current day, still think that the look of the animations during that time were definitely a kind of downgrade from the prior animations. But really, without Up coming up with xenography, or at least adapting it from prior technologies, the Disney animation may not exist nowadays, because prior to 101 Dalmatians, they didn't have the money to make that film. So that film sure, surely wouldn't have been made, and yeah, we may not have a Disney animation nowadays if it wasn't for xenography. Because even though films during that era weren't as highly regarded as films before and after that era, with xenography it means that even if the film didn't do that well, they could still break even because the costs were just that much lower. And that surely wasn't the case with 101 Dalmatians anyway, that was the highest grossing film of 1961 which they wouldn't have been able to do obviously without xenography. But yeah, films after that didn't do as well, but they still kept using it right up until the cap system came along, which was around the time of The Little Mermaid, with The Little Mermaid being the last film that used xenography before they went over to caps. And yeah, I've got a full video about that, you can see it up here. But that's it for xenography, that's how xenography pretty much saved Walt Disney's animation studio. If you like this video, be sure to leave your comments down in the comment section below and like this video too. And subscribe to see more videos like this one as well as other animation videos. I'm basically just saying the same thing twice. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye.